Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? A I'll motion. All right, motion and second. By so you are the only two voting people here today, right? And myself. Okay, so that means that makes a quorum. I'm assuming, right? We're doing it legal. <laughs> Do we have an attorney that's we don't this one? So, okay. Yeah. All right. So agenda motion and second made. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Uh, approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the previous minutes from a couple years ago? Make that motion. I yes. second. Second it. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all by saying aye. Aye. Hi. Uh, okay, for discussion of items, President by Amanda. So, started off on A, review investments. Okay, so currently we have investments at. Hey, Amanda, can you? Yes. Can we turn it down? Because it's very hard to listen to. That's here. Oh, that's here. Okay, that's too loud. Is this better? Yeah. Okay, um, so currently we have investments at PMA and at Bremer. Um, you're still, still kind of you're still loud. I'm trying to turn it down. I can't. You want me shouting at you? Yeah, thank you. That's better. Thanks. All righty. So currently we have PMA um, is our main investment account, and then we do have a money market account at um, Bremer Bank. So when you so when you say PMA is our main investment account, what does that mean? Um, they we had a bid back in 2018 or 2019 for an investment company um, to invest the county's funds, the excess funds that we have, and PMA was awarded that bid, and so they are our main investment vehicle that we use. Um, we have money in Bremer Bank from when we took the loans out for the highway building, and then we kept a money market account open at their bank, um, even when most of the funds were dispersed for a little bit of diversification. Um, and we had talked to PMA, and PMA does not have an agreement or did not at the time to invest with Bremer, so then we went out and invested on our own with them to have the local banks have some information or some of the funds. Um, Midwest one, we also have a money market type account in there, and that is for more of our, um. Cash, we, we kind of use it as our own internal sweep account. So we keep. Approximately 4 million in our general account. Do um, you have this in writing anywhere? Um, you can furnish that to me so I can follow along with what you're talking about. Well, this is just kind of an overview of our investments. Um, I don't really have any of that in writing. Well, I know, but it says we do investments. So if I'll, we're just going to listen to it and try to remember all this. Well, the basic review of investments is the packet that I sent over from PMA. That's what I'm looking at right here. Possibly. I but don't it should be know. nice if you're in the room for a meeting like this than doing a video. Can well, you come up here and sit with us? I'd rather do that than you sit in your office. Okay. If I'm going to have questions, if I'm going to sit in this meeting and go through this and chair it, I'm going to have questions for you and I'm going to need you to, if you can't even tell me if what's in front of me is accurate, then you need to be here. Well, I don't know what you printed out. That's why I don't know what's in front of you. Oh, perfect. Why don't you run up here? We'll wait a minute. Fine. Friday and I've already had two cranky meetings, so <laughs> at my real job. It is so ho easier. Hopefully, to I'm not too short with you guys today. No. <laughs> and I appreciate the dis discussion on the agenda. I got the meeting notice pretty late yesterday, so I'm curious as to what the overall intention of the meeting is and what you'd like to hear from me, so. And this is the first one I've ever sat on, so I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I don't have any agenda at all. I'm just following along. Gotcha. Is 
Is this a required thing, Vance? Is that why we're here? I don't know if it's required every year. Oh, yeah, every two years. Normally, Chad would probably need a lot of this. I since he's not here, I'm doing it. That's fine. I'm right. okay with that. I just needed, I've never had a meeting like this, so I'm just going to have right. to ask questions and just follow along. Right. So that's kind of why I'm kind of asking, why are we here? Why are we doing this? It says review investments. So I'm assuming if we there's a policy that says you're involved, he's involved, right. we're involved, Chad's involved. So it's when I want, when we say review investments, I'm going to really want to know what am I reviewing? Let's review the investments. Just not talk about it. Right. Review means let's look at them. Okay. Review to me. If it, go over verbal. That's policy. discussion. Right. Normally the agenda would say discussion of investments. It says review. Okay. Well, I'm this, assuming this, we're going to have paperwork here showing all the investments. I don't know. That's not the way it's ever been done in the past. So that's. Do we do that in the communication general government meeting? And we can circle that. back and do it then. Um, I don't know. What did we do last year? General government, we had you present. Uh, what do they call it? I I'm, fine with, I'm fine with skipping by all that then, and we'll just say, hey, let's make a recommendation at the end. That and we... I don't really feel comfortable making a recommendation without having Chad here. Okay. Um, because I don't know that much about investments in general. Uh, that's not that's not your deal. Right. I um, gotcha. Basically, okay. as the treasurer, my job is to take the recommendations from the entire committee and do it. Gotcha. And I'm just one of the one of the members of the committee. Perfect. So, I understand now. Basically, what we do is we just kind of go over and I say, okay, this is what we have. This is the rates that we're getting. Um, just kind of a brief overview. When we go through PMA, it has a lot more information because they actually do the investing. We don't do it. They just say, this is what we have. Do you agree? And Chad and I usually you know, sometimes say, yep, that looks good. Then Keep doing do the way it. you've been doing it. Yep. Gotcha. So we don't do any of the actual physical investments on our end. Gotcha. Okay. Because we've done that in the past and that's sure something of a nightmare work wise okay <laughs> which yep, is why that's fine. Not an investment group okay perfect um so, so the view today the on a agenda item a we're just going to be really talking about this packet that pma right has and then us. we do have like i said a small lot forever bank and in midwest one is our main general operating fund and we have two accounts there well we have a bunch more but two main accounts our general account, which gets 0.25 base, uh, basis points or points, 0.25. And then we have a money market that gets currently 0.3. It was higher, but the rates tank everywhere. So sure. And that's where we put money, like when we get our tax money in, we have a lot into there because we know we only have it for less than a month. We're going to be sending it back out. Sure. So it doesn't make sense to give it a route. And this is all through. PMA, but then you said also Bremer and Midwest. Yeah, and Midwest is our main operating account. That's where all the checks that come out to pay all of our bills are. Midwest is yeah. our typical, that's what we call our normal banker. Right. They had the bank bid from 17 or 18. No, we're looking at doing another bank bid. It's a three year term, and then there's two or three year optional. If we both agree on it to keep the bank big in the bank. So well, that is that why they're on the account right now. Are we still just reviewing investments right now? Right. This is just the investments that we're reviewing. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that Chad is going to want to have another meeting to talk about the bank bid. Okay. Um, I don't know necessarily if that's the investment committee or general government. We'll have to look at the policy. So let's, my one opinion would be is that I would like the, re the review investments to be forwarded to general government. It does go there once a year for policy. Yeah. So, and I think then we don't need to worry about it right now. Then any more detail on that, since we don't have paperwork and stuff that I can well, look at. We have this is the main investments. This is all of it right here. They go through and they tell you know. Okay. The first half is. So do we want PMA to actually walk through us with right, us? Right. When we get to that point. Um, oh, that's not what we're in. Okay. So should we go to the next line item then? So well, what we're doing with. What I'm doing with review investments is just kind of giving you a top overview of where we have our money. And you did. Right. Okay. So I don't know the interest rate for Bremer per se for their money market. Um, I'm thinking Rick will probably go into that when we get to the line item that says Bremer Bank. Yep. Um, state investment fund is another vehicle or state investment pool that we've used in the past. It's 0 0.05, so we have very little in there right now. Um, and that's our main. Before we um. Well, with PMA, we use the state investment pool a lot. Um, sorry. Uh, 
Um, and their rights are not as good. And plus, now that we have um, PMA and Bremer, can then the higher interest account at Midwest, we don't use them nearly as much. Sure. Um, the nice thing about all of the places that we have money, we have uh, money that's available that if we need it, we can have it within 24 hours. Um, PMA has money in their West Fund. The Bremer Bank has it in their money market. And then also, the, obviously, Midwest one. So we have money available if we need it. Which is yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to have to take a penalty to close a CD early. Yeah. We also have a couple CDs in local banks. I think right now we have Sterling and uh, Citizen State Bank in Clayton. And I don't think we have any more in whatever it is in Clear Lake. I lost track of what bank is there. Um, because they've been bought out twice now, I think. <clears throat> But we do periodically double check with PMA to make sure that this isn't a bank that they would invest with. Because we, we have to let when PMA does their investments, we have to let them know where any of our money is so that they don't invest in that company also because sure. that would put us over the federal sure. insurance limit. So and how often and how often do you go out and review other banks to use besides Bremer and um well, you said the, the Bremer was not like a, uh, that was just a decision to make an investment in it, right? Right, because they, that's where our loan was when that's we did the highway, the highway shop. Right. So you also have a, like a savings account there. Let's just go And then there. all of um, Golden Age Matters funds are in Bremer Bank. Okay. So, so, how, so how often do we review that as a county policy that we allow other banks to have an opportunity to do business with us? Three to five years we do a bank bid. Um, and so I think, like I said, the last one was 2017, and Kenny was working on one just the other day, and I had forwarded her for my paperwork from last time we did it. Okay. And so we're going to combine the paperwork. And so when you go out for bank bids or look at new investments, uh, what's the process of doing it? How do you actually let, you know, I, I'm familiar with RFPs when we do a construction project. How do you allow banks to know that, hey, Polk County is open for other options? Basically, we kind of do it the same. We have an RFP on the site on the website that allows where we have the bidding. Sure. Um, okay. In the past. So everyone has an opportunity. Right. That's all it is. What we, one of the, I think our policy rules is we like to have a branch in the county. Sure. So then what I tend to do is notify all the banks and say, hey, we're doing a bid. It's on gotcha. our website. Okay. Those are the dates, just so that everybody knows. They, they have that opportunity. Yep. Okay. That's good. Like there's a new bank now in Balsam Lake that was sure. there last time. Right. Sure. Sure. So our branch here is the, the basically the cash machine downstairs, right? Is that what you're talking about? The uh, we have RCU in the building. Yeah. That's the cash machine. And a lot of them don't bid on the county. Um, Some banks just don't want. It's right. not in their niche. Right. It's not in their yeah, wheelhouse. Exactly. Whatever. Okay. So, um, That's good. And we had asked Midwest one about a uh, ATM, and they weren't interested. And so then Maggie or IT or someone went out just talking to them. Someone was interested. Sure. And yeah. we don't receive anything from them, so yeah. it's just. More of a customer service kind yes, of thing for people. So. Yeah. Even the public comes in. Oh, and yeah. Yeah. Come in and use it and leave. Them. So it's interesting. Um, so that's basically what it is. Um, so investment accounts and rates. Yep. Where are those numbers in this book right here? Um, I think so. PMA, you're there. Would you just share us what investment and rates are? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Um, Amanda, do you want me to, I'm not sure if I can share my screen. As a panelist, you should be able to. All right, let me try this reclaim host role. I hope this doesn't do anything here. One second. It is not letting me share my screen, but Amanda, if, if you have that Polk County investment committee. Yep. Slide, if you want, I'll kind of go straight through there. Do you want me to do kind of a quick overview of PMA and WISC, or do you want me to jump right into kind of the history? Um, probably more of the history of what we have. Um, we can kind of go into a little bit of what WISC is when we get to that section of it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So just kind of to recap what Amanda said, um, we were hired in uh, RFP back in December of 2017. 
So we were hired to provide investment management services. Uh, the WISC account was opened in August of 2018. In 2018, we did a cash flow analysis for the county where we just basically analyzed kind of the current um, cash balances, investment balances of the county. And then we used that to sort of develop like an investment plan. And with that investment plan here, I think I'm on about page five, the 2019 investment plan we did in June of 2019, the investment committee at that time determined that they would like to do a $6 million three year investment ladder. So we had maturities that were coming due every six months. And that portfolio yield at the time was at a 1.7%. And the weighted average maturity of that was about 575 days. So, you know, the rough average maturity of the portfolio was about, um, 18 months at that time. Um, and if you kind of scroll down here to the current investments, I think I'm going all the way down to the interest income projection for Polk County. I've got that as slide 15. You'll see kind of some green and blue bars there. And the um, what that's going to show is the current investment portfolio that we have, we've got about $3.1 million right now that is currently invested in CDs. The yield portfolio yield on that is about 1.5%. Um, I've got on there the green bars in the maturity distribution kind of show existing investments. The weighted average maturity, you can see we've got maturities rolling off coming up in August, September, and then going out to August and September of 22 as well. Again, that portfolio kind of blended portfolio yield on that is about 1.5%. Interest income that's going to come when those CDs mature is about $83,406. And so that is kind of where we stand right now. The blue bars on this, and I don't know if we're at this section yet, Amanda, but that's going to be how PMA operates and what we were hired to do is we are strictly a broker. So when Polk County reaches out to us and say, hey, we have funds to invest or, hey, we have liquid funds that need to do investment, we reach out to our network of banks. So we've got about 600 banks in our network that we reach out to. And we say Polk County can invest, you know, X dollars amount for these maturities. We bid that out. And then we have what's called like a CD quote, um, which I can take you through, but we bid those out and then send the CD quote with all of the investment rates back to Amanda and Chad. And then they review that and we can see kind of a whole national bank network of rates that the county can choose to do. Um, and we also have the option to, I believe Chad and Amanda have kind of been reaching out themselves to locals like to Bremer Bank, um, Sterling Bank, I think Midwest One and Franson, I think might be another one that's kind of in the mix. So we can certainly reach out to locals, um, but I think they've been kind of reaching out to those local banks themselves and kind of comparing versus the national bank rates on that. And then they just let us know, hey, we would like to you know, grab these CDs through the, you know, PMA account, or, you know, they may decide to keep funds locally based on where those rates are at that time too. So that's typically the process. We do are the uh, investment advisor on the WISC fund where we do have funds, but typically we are just the broker, you know, so we're going out and bidding these investments out for Polk County and then presenting those to the county and then they can make decisions based on where those rates are, where those local rates are as to where they want to place the funds. So that's kind of the typical process we do. Um, again, in 2019, when we did this original investment ladder, um, that was done pretty much all with network banks um, on that one. And again, at that time, that was like about a 1.7% yield on that portfolio. As we've had some CDs mature, we kind of went through a, you know, some different times for rates here where 2016, we had rising rates, right? Um, 2019, we had a little bit of a yield curve. So when we had those first investments roll off, Amanda, I think you could kind of agree with this. We had an inverted yield curve. 
So there's kind of a, a, you know, different time where liquid rates were actually higher than longer term rates. So a lot of those maturities we had in that original CD ladder, they just did, wanted to keep liquid because the liquid rates were actually higher than going back out for a 12 month or 18 month or 24 month CD. Um, but as of right now, we've got the, um, you know, the, the blended portfolio yield on that is about 1.5%. The weighted average maturity on that, or when these CDs will mature, is uh, has a weighted average maturity of about 200 days. Our last investments will be maturing in September of 22. I'm hoping with the change in the um, environment of investing that we can start seeing some upward movement on rates, especially going into 23, 24. Um, we do, and I think the WISC fund is about uh, 30 basis points. Uh, the WISC IS fund, that daily rate right now, is at 0.03%. Oh, okay. So I thought we had you on. Is that what we're in? Uh, the liquid funds we have are in that, yeah, that's currently okay. in that investment series account. Okay. And then again, when we do look at other liquid options for that, we also have various savings deposit accounts and insured cash sweep accounts that we can do. Um, those rates, you know, in general, money market account rates across the board are, are very low. But yeah, as of right now, we've got all those liquid funds in the WISC IS currently. Okay. And I know um, we had talked, Chad and I, about going back into the CD market hopefully very soon. Um, like you said, we have 3 million approximately 3.1 in the CDs currently, and then about 9.1 in the West County. And it was pretty much 6 and 6 for right. a while. So why, why so much more at the WISC fund if it's only getting 0.3%? Because when we, when the CDs fell off, the WISC fund was a little higher than the CD rates. Um, and if you look at the CD bid that they have, they are starting to go up a little. Um, there's a couple point three, point two, point oh nine, point one one. So hopefully we're finally seeing it reverse a little bit more in our favor. Okay. So the key is ultra conservative. That's my goal. Yeah. Turns out in investments, whether it's my money or anybody else's money, I prefer extreme security and diversity rate. And in general, the board has gone that direction as well. The fact that it's so if I read that right, the WISC fund at 0.3%, the average maturity is 732 days, um, meaning that it's stuck there for a while. No, the WISC fund we could pull if we wanted to all 9 million out within a day or two. We could oh. get a lot of it out within a couple hours, but. Okay, I see. The CDs are the ones that are locked in, and if we were to pull them early, we would pay a penalty. Yeah, and a lot of the yields on the CDs are still because those were invested, you know, in we did a few, a lot of them were done in 2019, but we did some reinvestment of one of the maturities also in March of 20. And those yields too, I think are, you know, significantly higher than the money market account rates. So, you know, recommendation in the CD portfolio would probably be, you know, let those, you know, go to maturity. Again, the blended yield on the current CD portfolio you have through WISC is at like 1.5%. And we've got yields on there from, you know, 0.54 looks like the lowest CD that's going to be maturing in September of 21 up to like a 1.83% um, will be one of the ones that are maturing in like August of 21. So we did really good compared to what they're at now. Okay. Maybe a dumb question, but if we if we're required to have twenty percent of our general fund unassigned and unassigned is means that in the general ledger it's not assigned to a specific account. It doesn't mean that it can't be invested in an investment fund. Okay. Because we could always, like I said, we could always go and pull that money out. We might have to pay a small penalty if we were to take it out of the CDs, but we could get our hands on it within twenty four hours. Okay. Pretty much, give or take. Yep. Is there ever an occasion you need the money in 24 hours? Um, no, not at the So it's never day. happened? Not since I've been here. When I started, we were kind of cash poor, and for 
were painful, we would have to really kind of keep our eyes on it to make sure we had funds in the general account. So is there a reason to rethink policy on that issue then to say, hey, we need to invest in accounts that we can pull it out immediately when we never need to do that anymore? Well, we what we can invest in is determined by our investment policy and the state has a fairly strict what you can invest in. So these CDs, some of them were three year CDs. Sure. So we can always pull them out, but you take a penalty. I understand. So, but we basically are our cash that we have at hand is in Midwest One Bank, which is right around, I think, about 10 million. Um, and we keep it all in one bank. Correct. It's all insured. Anything above the 400,000, um, or is it 250s FDIC? 250 is FDIC, yep. And then the other one, which some banks will use, is that 400,000, what's called that state guarantee fund. I would check with auditors to see on that. Typically, PMA doesn't allow banks to use that 400,000 of insurance just because it's questionable. You know, that's the entire state has access to that state guarantee fund. So if there was an issue in the markets, you know what I mean? With all you know, what all municipalities, counties, public entities have access, you know what I mean? That pot of money I don't think would be large enough. So typically we require either, you know, the collateral, right? All the investments be collateralized, insured, you know, via like a letter of credit or that FDIC insurance, like you said, um, Amanda, that's that 250,000. So we won't place investments if it doesn't have at least that FDIC insurance. Again, then you're capped though only at you going to 250,000 per institution. Or, you know, they need to have pledged collateral held at a third party or like that letter of credit um, guaranteeing that deposit. So, and Bremer has a letter of credit and Midwest One has pledged collateral. And I get a report every month from Midwest One. And um, I just ship that to the auditors when the auditors come through. Um, and then uh, Bremer has the letter of credit, which is held in our name through them, um, through a third party out of Iowa. Um, and um, we have any time any of that changes, like if we take a chunk out of Bremer, then they'll lower their letter of credit that they're collateralizing. So we have insurance on all our funds. So the money that you have in uh, Midwest One, the $10 million, that's basically your cash flow. Is it a checking account or a savings account? It's checking. It's a checking account. Yeah. So that 10 million, you try to keep a balance of 10 million in that account? Um, it comes and goes. How, how much does it swing? Um, we probably get to lowest would be about three to four million. Okay. And then we're starting to go up right now because it's tax collection time. Sure. And we'll get up to probably close to 20 million because in August we'll pay out about 24 million. Sure. So, but. So that account would. That account with uh, Midwest One, you can draw that down to a dollar. If we wanted to. If yes. you wanted to. And where's your line of credit at, you said, is with Bremer? Like um, if you they need... have a letter of credit. We have a money market there, but then they have it insured through a letter of credit. So if something were to happen, you can go we can explode. You got that we covered. Be able to get our money. So do you, ever use, do you use a line of credit for cash flow ever? No. So you never have to borrow money for cash flow? We have not ever had to. Okay. Some counties have, especially sure. in 2019 sure. or 2018 with the, the big drop in the market and yeah. housing boom, but we have been very fortunate. Okay. So. Well, good with that then. We'll, well, are we ready to move on to Bremer bank account? So yeah, Rick, if you would like to kind of give an overview. Um, like I said, I know we have a bunch of smaller accounts with Gold Age Manor, and then we have the money market account, and then we have the loans uh, from the highway building. Right, your main account is a money market premier account. It's got above $5.8 million, and then the other smaller accounts are roughly $80,000. What I had talked a little bit with Chad about is looking at some ladder CDs for that $5.8 million. So right now it isn't a money market, just sort of like um, <clears throat> PMA's with IS fund, it's, it's there to be liquid. And so it's not at a high rate. It's at, I think we're at 0 0.032, but I do have some options for CDs. 
that could ladder that and get you up to, you know, 20 to 25 basis points if that's of interest to you. So, um, like I said, I wasn't totally prepared for this meeting. I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation and it's shedding a lot of light on the county's overall cash position, but I think there's definitely something that we could offer to try and improve the return on that. How about if we just spend it? <laughs> <laughs> the question I did have is, does the county have an overall investment policy procedure for how we they manage their funds? Yeah, that would be copy that would be good, that would that. Be good so to we... run back to the general government to a copy of that also. Okay. And do you, uh, Amanda, keep a summary of the overall cash or investments that the county has? Just to Pretty show? much, yes. Okay. Um, what do we use the cash in Bremer account for? That's Golden Age money, Golden Age Manor funds, like when they get paid for the the $5 million. Dollars in power, uh, the but... $5 million that we left in there after the loans, um, because we took the loans. For, when we got the loans for the highway building, we put them all in a money market account. Um, in Bremer Bank, and then so what do you think? Bremer, when we borrowed the money, they gave us in one, they gave us in a chunk, right? And then we paid out of it. And then, yeah, what we did is we paid out of our general cash account at yeah. West One, and then at the end of it, we kind of settled up and transferred the money back into our general account. Um, and then we left five million over there as another investment option, but the investment is like nothing, right? So we've had five million dollars sitting in their bank making no money. Well, it made more until. <laughs> yeah, what happened, Chris, in, in 2020, when the COVID crisis hit, you saw a dramatic decrease in interest rates because everything just shut down. So we went from an environment where you were seeing maybe 50 to 90 basis points to literally single digits, zero to three digits. So um, it's the, the economy right now, there's a lot of cash that the, the good news is from a borrowing standpoint, which the county is also considering, those rates are extremely low. So it's, it's a borrower's market right now, and there's a lot of cash. So the deposit rates, as um, Josh mentioned, are really low just in general. It's really tough for banks because they're flush with deposits to offer attractive rates on that side. They're trying to get uh, loans out to justify raising the interest rates. That so makes banks, sense? Yeah, so you're saying to, right now banks have plenty of deposits. They're not out beating the doors down for deposits. Correct. That's correct. Because with COVID, everything got quiet in terms of borrowing. Sure. So sure. we're hopeful, gotcha. as Amanda is, that that will turn around and we'll get back to some decent rates. Uh, but that's a reality every, every financial institution is sort of facing right now. And to give you an example, in Midwest One, our Excess fund cash account was at 150 basis points until COVID. Now it's at 30. Sure. Um, so, it, and the same Bremer Bank was also, like, I think we were at about 90. Um, so they were much better, just everything is out. Yeah. That's just the world we're in right now, man. Yeah, because I know, I mean, it's not on the agenda, so, but we're talking about banking. I just, I just, I know I've heard the board talking about. How are we going to finance the next project? And then we're going to have a big trail project coming probably next year. So I know we have some big ideas coming. Right. And uh, I think it's very important that we really brief the general government committee on so what all this means. So basically, while we have these funds in these liquid accounts, doesn't mean that they're not earmarked for specific items in the general ledger and in our accounting system. So, you, so you'll you'll share that with general government again, what they're earmarked for. That would be yep, helpful. That would be because a nice thing, but yeah, make sure people that think that that cash is sitting there. We can just go grab it, and it's not going to affect anybody. And we're going to go spend it on a remodeling project. Right. But you're yep. there may be some pushback to say, hey guys, don't take that much. Right? Well, guys. and we have a policy that says we have to keep a certain amount up above. Like so, we have a budget of nineteen million, yeah. and we have to keep a certain percentage of that nineteen million in. Sure. Um, is that county policy? Yeah, that's a county policy. Gotcha. Is that the 20%? I think so. Because we've already had one supervisor, Supervisor O'Connell, request that we review at last county board meeting. He asked us that we review our uh, 
our uh, policy on our general fund that we should raise it from 20 to what we should be doing. Right, and the auditor <laughs> recommend that we're at like 30 to 50. Right. And so we're going to review not that. that we require that. No, but that's what they like, they like to keep. keep the supervisors, I think, are ready to take that on and raise that number. And I just need, we got to just make sure it's on that agenda at some point that we're going to do that, give them and that opportunity before we go start. Because there's going to be a lot of cash grab, I'm guessing, at the end of the year with more projects from supervisors. So it'd be nice to get policy in place before the budget season. Right. And we've had some really good money management um, in our yeah. county administrator position. We were not this strong um, when, I, when I became treasurer in 2003. Sure. I think we were right at like 15%, we yeah. were under our 20. Right. Um, and so they worked really hard to really look at our expenses and look at our revenues. Right. Um, one thing that happens, I've noticed, is when the economy goes down, Expenses in the county government go up because then you have more sure. sheriff's department calls, more child welfare calls, human services, public health, law enforcement. They all get hit harder yeah. when times are tough. So yeah. and it's reverse what you think. Yeah, the, the, the rate of a property tax that comes in is right. They tend to go up. We have been. Kind of I have to say that the stimulus packages from the federal government, I think, have kept our property tax rates phenomenal collection wise. Um, because we see as soon as those stimulus payments go up, we see collections coming. Gotcha. Okay. So it's really, I think it's really helped the citizens. Of it's helpful to hear all this. And now when we go to general government too, we can have a better talk because I, I know there's a feeling on the county board. It's time for us to spend some money on the taxpayers out there yep. than necessarily just on services. So I, I just have a sense that, and even myself, yep. It's time to start spending some money in the community on investment, not in the banks, because we're not getting any money for it. Right. We might as well make the investment into the community. And I think that philosophy is kind of on the board right now. And it's a good time with the right. environment that we're in. Right. So that'll help the neighbor would, out if we take yeah. some of those dollars out of your bank and go spend it. <laughs> I would add this it's good conversation that's because that's, like. I deal with a number <laughs> I deal with a number of municipalities and that's a common question from the average taxpayer is they look at the balance sheet of the county and say you've you've got ten to twenty million dollars. Why is that sitting there? And like Amanda pointed out, there are designated purposes for those right. and you wanna maintain that twenty percent balance if you can. It just makes the overall county structure stronger. So Right. Uh, and as Brian pointed out, or Josh, I mean, I'm sorry, um, with PMA, you did a cash flow analysis. So that's always good to share with your general board to let them know, right. here's what we have in terms of current cash and why it's there, what its purpose is. And then here's what we have upcoming for potential cash needs and how we're gonna meet those. That's right. all a great conversation. And we're very consistent with cash. This is like a three or four year one here. Sure. This is property tax collections and then paying it out. Gosh, next yeah. year. It's almost the same. Yep. And so we're very consistent. Um, December tends to be when we have our lowest cash amount. And, and then in January, we start getting a lot more money. We get our first big property tax payments from the municipalities. And the state starts uh, throwing more money out through the beginning of the year to human services. Yep. So. Okay, that's been all helpful. All right, so uh, anything else from Brenner Bank? No, not that I can think of. Okay. I'm, I might send you an email uh, later today, Rick, or possibly Monday, um, <laughs> about sure. getting yeah. some information on CDs, and then the chat comes back, we can talk about it, and so then when we have our next meeting or we go to general government, we'll have that information. Perfect. That'd be great. Yep. So what's the certification? Certificate of the pot. That's the CDs. Okay, so we've already talked yeah. about that. Local government investment pool. What's that? Uh, that's the state investment fund. Um, that's also it's a very strong, very stable fund. Um, Wisconsin has one of the better investment pools in the nation. Sure. Um, they're also extremely low right now. Uh, so for and we have money in there. We have about a million. About a million dollars, and that that just sits there. Yep. Yeah. Okay. We used to before we started investing in other companies and before we had that other. You used to have a lot of it there. 
right? We would transfer mm -hmm. like every three days, especially in July. Yeah, I got you. And then just before we paid out, we would bring it, Pull all, it all back out. out. I remember hearing about that account. Mm -hmm. Midwest One Bank, they're not here on the meeting? Right. Okay. Um, and that's just basically we don't do any investments with them. That's just our cash accounts. Right. Um, we do have one small CD, but that is through Land and Water. It's a um, mining. Oh, sure. Um, collateral. Yeah. It's one of the three ways that they can do it through the state statutes. And an investment policy? Um, I'll we'll get a copy that. and I'll send one to you, Rick. I think PMA has a copy of our investment policy. And that's what we'll run back through general government and let's let them give us an update at general government on that. Yeah. Okay. Banking contract review. Um, we'll probably bring it up at general government. We're okay. just in the process of getting it ready. Perfect. Um, PMA. So the ARPA funds. ARPA we have funds. That's the big question on what everyone's asking about. Right. What's that all and about? That's the 4 million, which currently is part of the 10 billion that we really have in Midwest one. We just have had it less than a month. Sure. Oh, I so see. A little over a month, maybe not. Okay. Um, we'll be getting another 4 million. I think it's at the end of this year or next May. I think it's at the next year. Okay. By the end of next year. Um, that'll come. Yeah, second allocation is going to come in 2022. Right. Um, and, and that's the question. So we've got the 4.25 million that's been deposited in our account. The question is, is, is are we better? Are we can or we're allowed to invest that in a CD. Once we make interest on that, that interest can go into our general fund. Sure. Uh, now, the question comes up. What if the board decides? Six months from now, spend it here. Or, you know, they want to. I've I heard that it sounds like they want to spend a little bit of it if they can on this building remodel. Might be, yeah. yeah. So whatever they want to do, well, then then we take that cash out of our general fund because we've got that locked in a CD. I see. And so and then we it when it's oh, oh, I see. So you got a good enough cash flow. It sounds like you could say you wanted to spend. We, let's say Chad told us the board we could spend five hundred thousand dollars on the building, right? Right. And that would be fairly easy, I think, in our cash flow situation. That you could do that, and if it wouldn't be a problem to get it later with the CD. I see, sure. because that's the part that would be the the uh, yeah water sewer infrastructure. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. There was talk just so we, you know, there's no reason we can't talk about it <laughs> with PMA here in this too is. So we approved eight million dollars for a construction project here, roughly, or seven million, whatever it was. I know the board senses that just because we can borrow. So we've heard that from county board uh, or county staff that oh, we can borrow all of it and we're fine. I I hear they say just because we can borrow it, it doesn't mean we should. And if we have extra cash. I think supervisors feel like, can we use a little bit of that art money and a little bit of our general fund money? And let's just throw out a number. Let's say we scrounge up a million and a half dollars of cash and the rest is borrowed. So we can borrow that 5 million, 6 million, and then a million and, and a half. What, that's what I'm hearing. Right. But so it's just think about that as we present to general government and, and thinking about strategy. And this project is when would this project start? Um, do we know? I think is it next winter? I think it would start this coming. Yeah, it's coming winter, winter and work through the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you use the cash in the beginning of the project or at the end of the project would work. The only thing we have to do is make sure when we and Chad Tens has a very good handle on this is to make sure that we designate any ARPA funds. Yeah, because that has to be handled in a completely different manner. I understand. But he's like I said, he's good at that. He's good at that experience. Yeah. All the tornado yeah. stuff right. and just the throwing stuff. it out there. I don't know how the board will vote, but so and I know some of the guys just seem the ones that seem right. to be more vocal have made those comments. So I know yeah. one of the things Chad wanted to really make sure the board understood is that currently we have debt at like a level of say, I'm just throwing out numbers here because I don't have the schedule for me. Five million. Right. And as debt's falling off the next couple of years, the problem is, is that if we don't reinvest and keep debt at that level, our ability to levy goes down. And I understand that. I think that presentation needs to be done to supervisor because I don't ever think everyone understands that it will change our levy, and then we'll right. be going back and 
you know, getting more or referendum down the road or whatever, yes. what it means. So, yeah. or whenever there's a, an emergency. I don't think anyone wants to get below that. I think everyone, I think, can be convinced that it's good to just maintain this, but let's not over maintain it. Right. So, another thought for you, Chris. Yeah. Um, when you talk about that borrowing dynamic, I'm hearing that a lot with the municipalities. Um, my counterpoint to using your current investments that are really low right now, you're hoping that rate environment is going to improve. Whereas if you borrow money, there's potential to lock in a rate. I'll throw out there for 10 years, you might get under 2%. So would you rather borrow and lock in a rate at 2% and then hope your investments get a higher rate down the road? That's part of the thinking too. Do you see my point? And I totally do. And it'd be good to have a banker than just not say nothing, having a government employee tell us that, but right. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So sometimes we do trust our banker more than our government guy. <laughs> like, all the time. like all the time, but you know, and, and I think, I think a lot of these people and myself, it's kind of like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I could go to the bank every day and borrow money, but. There's a sense of, hey, it's good, it's paid for, it's paid for, it's paid for. And when we really mm -hmm. need something, let's go borrow it. Because the county has never been turned down on a loan. If we needed money, right. we got money. Right. So yep. you pay for what it is someday. And if someday your yep. interest rate's 10%, then that's what we pay. Right. On a personal level, I tell clients, if you had a hundred grand, you could pay off your mortgage, but or you could invest it. What would you rather do if you can lock in a mortgage at two, three percent right now? Literally, is what people are doing, right. and use that hundred grand to invest it. You're hoping you can beat that. So that's a little bit of the thinking that municipalities are doing right now: is if we can lock in the funds, right. let's keep on our own investments and use those, you know, to so, get a better return down the road. But for now, for the four point two five million or what two point right whatever. Yeah. Do we want to uh, pursue and look at investing it in something like a 12 or 18? As long as you guys can, as long as you guys could say, hey, we're investing it. But I think Chad's got to be able to have the ability to say, we will be able to use those funds to pay for part of. If he can say that, no one's going to get into the weeds and when it happens. Yeah, right. because as, as we said, the key yeah. is it may be locked up so we can take that money yeah. out of our general fund. I think you're in the CD. Yeah, you won't have a problem with that. So do we want to go ahead? And, and what I would like is, is maybe we do, uh, I guess, an RFP type process to, for local banks and national ones just to compare to make sure we're not doing anything stupid. Well, I noticed this one bank we invest in here, Pacific Western Bank. I used to live in Brea, California, and I used to go to that bank. So that's a good bank. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Do I remember you? I, know, I, know. I was the guy who used to bounce checks back then. <laughs> okay. um, I was 18 years old. We don't have to. The investment committee can make the decisions on where to put the funds. Currently. This committee? Correct. We don't necessarily have need to, to go, go have over them. RFP because we had an RFP that gave us the investment broker. Okay. So we can, so we can just pick a bank or okay. bank because, no banks. as I understand it, we only want to invest at each particular bank. This is what's kind of screwy 250000 Right. And that's why we have PMA. They do all of that and they say, okay. here's the rates we got. Do you want to do all this? Do you want to do some of them? Do you want to do none of them? So here's, here's my only one comment would be, is I did get a call about the local bank. Right. Right. And all they want to do is have a seat at the table, have a phone call. Not mm -hmm. that they could be our bank or not that they want to come in and, but they said the same thing. Uh, yeah, we don't need deposits. We're not out knocking doors down, but whether it's a loan down the road, mm -hmm. whether it's a deposit or something, I just at least want to have, we have a bank, we had banks leave our community here as our county seat. We had one bank that showed up and said, we will come in and stay in your community. I definitely want to show uh, at least the opportunity that the doors open for them to do whatever. And I, I don't want to get into any specifics, but I just would like a phone call to them to say, here's what we're doing. And if PMA is the right avenue. Great. So we, we would look at, really, we would probably, 
So the whole thing is the whole kind of supporting it. And what we usually do is contact them and say, hey, we're looking for CDs at this amount in this term. Yeah. Or these four terms for these amounts. Can you let me know if they're interested? Sure. And we hear back. We used to hear back from most of them. And then about 2017, we stopped hearing from most of them. Sure. Um, <laughs> Gotcha. And then, um, what we do is, I, I do you remember the name of the bank account is? Baldwin. Baldwin? Okay, so what we would do is double check with PMA. If they're part of PMA's network, then we would invest via PMA through them. Yeah. Or we would say, PMA, take them out of our network because we're going to have, so that we don't, what we don't want to do I is understand. the double. To yeah, as long as you guys do whatever you got to yeah. do. And there might be other new banks in Polk County that I would yeah. want to reach out to than just the, the parameters and the, the yeah. big boys. And oh, yeah. yeah. That's why we have 250 at right. uh, Clayton Bank. Right. Um, and I can't remember. I haven't looked at our CD list recently. Um, we had one for the Clear Lake Bank, for, and we might still have one in there. I just don't remember what the latest name is. I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. And I, I know Francis yeah. always said they weren't interested. Um, sure. In CDs, but I, they may be interested if we do a loan again. Yeah. And that would be something different than we've done that I am kind of dealing with. I gotcha. do with the investment, not the taking borrowing. Money. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I appreciate that comment as a local bank also, Chris, because it ebbs and flows, but we always like to have the opportunity to bid. Uh, but like you just pointed out right now, we're flush with deposits. We not, may not offer the most attractive. And Bremer has that option through our trust also to do investments like PMA does. So internally, we look at that. And if the bank's okay with deposits, we do explore other external uh, CD options with national banks. So we can do that also. But the other point I, I wanted to share is when you go to a local bank for that CD, you're using the deposits of your taxpayers. So you're sort of giving that benefit to your taxpayers by having a local bank. And sometimes municipalities in their investment policy have the goal of having a certain percentage of their portfolio, at least local, because that's your taxpayers' dollars actually in those banks. Uh, but yeah, so it's market like, right now, it'll be yeah. interesting to see how the bids come through. So I, I guess one of the things that I'm taking away from sitting in this meeting is that, you know, I, and I see chats here, morning chat. Um, the, uh, I guess I'd like to just see the opportunity for general government, whoever that you would present us, maybe, maybe it's time to reach out to the professionals that are here today and uh, look at our current policy and give us some advice on how to draft and make some changes to new policy if we need to make changes if it's been a while. I just like that to be on general government's agenda. And if you guys recommend some policy changes with anywhere from we're talking about our fund balance to banking, investing, borrowing. So the investment policy only looks at the investments. I understand. That's different but, policies. But yeah, we can pull all it's just having them all out there and you know the world's changing and let's just look at if we need to add an extra this or that. Across the T, then let's let's do it, right? Yeah, and Chad and Amanda, um, I, PMA started off 35 years ago as like a bank credit analysis company. So we do have a full credit department too. So if you do want another set of eyes on kind of investment policy, our credit group, you know, we've got we've helped out tons of counties and municipalities with investment policies. So if it helps you get a start, you know, we could have them take a look at it and maybe introduce some maybe new ideas to consider for that. Um, so that's something just through our credit group that we could, you know, we help a lot of counties and municipalities kind of update, you know, just make sure the current policies are good and maybe propose any new changes, you know, especially if there's any, sometimes there's references, you know, to old statutes, you know what I mean, or old insurance um, line item things. So we'd be happy to, Kind of, you know, put another set of eyes on that too and say, hey, here's what, you know, maybe some recommendations, you know, we would have. And then you could bring that, you know, to committee to kind of review, you know, some of those options too. And, and I think the local flavor on this, I mean, for us, kind of our bread and butter too with, you know, our national bank network, we do work with a lot of Wisconsin banks, but 
Um, I think the county's always done a really good job. You know, sometimes, you know, I think local banks really value that personal touch, right? Talking directly with the county. We have, we will always contact banks in the footprint, you know what I mean? Unless told that, hey, you know what, we're going to reach directly out to, you know, Rick at Bremer or Midwest One Bank. But that's always important for us too. you know, when we're presenting to committee, you know, yes, we've got a nice national bank network, you know what I mean? But that local, local interest, we think is, you know, we know that's really powerful locally. And even sometimes if rates are comparable, they might not be the best rate. There's still a ton of value, I think, right? And kind of good, you know, it's a good story to have those funds placed locally too. So yeah, we are always happy to do you know, include any locals on that bidding process, unless that wants to be done, you know, uh, directly through the county, so. And I think it's a good idea to have our investment policy looked at. I mean, we started looking at our personnel policies and our financial policies overall last year and doing an annual review and update, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure investment policies and Amanda will know better, but I don't think investment policies have been touched since they were put in place about 10 years ago. We did update it about maybe five years ago, I think the state upped, uh, prior to that, you, you couldn't have an investment in a CD beyond, I think it was three years, and they changed that to either five or seven, and we did update it at that time. Okay. Um, but I don't know if there's been any other changes since then. Yeah, so, yeah Amanda, we'd be happy to, if you want, I could send that down to our credit department if you want, and just, okay. you know, they could give kind of some recommendations and, and updates if you guys would like. That's great. So let's just go ahead and get this yeah, out of with that. If you need action today to invest, uh, I, I would make a motion that you would, uh, like we talked about Chad earlier, that the understanding is whatever you invest in this, you can invest in CD, however you want me to make the motion, I'll make it. Um, but just, were you here, Chad, we're talking about that maybe we'd want to use some of those funds for the building project? No, I no. wasn't, I'm sorry. Okay. Time difference is big here, so. Um. That's fine, I'm just gonna just, say what I think you've heard is that it's fine to go ahead. I'll make a motion to put it in CD, but I know there's going to be support at the board to use some of those funds for the construction project on the new building. So let's just say we could use 500. You identified we could use $500,000. I'm just picking a number out for the remodeling project for infrastructure, whatever it met the ARP, you know, requirement. So. And that you, we don't need the cash up front, but at some point you got enough cash flow in your general fund that let's say you use $500,000, but you had to wait till the CD expired to actually replenish your general fund. That's right. what I was throwing out earlier. So if I make a motion to say yes, invest it in, um, send out RFPs, invest it in CDs, mm -hmm. just as long and we can keep it that simple. You guys have to make a decision on it's a year, two year, three year based on your cash flow that someone's going to ask you to use some of those funds. Does that make yeah, sense? We'll, yeah, and we can tie the stepladder schedule to the schedule that LHB puts out for construction and okay. look at what costs are when you, we could tie the the timeline for the investments to that. That would make so sense. How, how would you want the motion to be uh, put down in minutes? I, I guess the motion would be authorize the administrator and treasurer to invest the money um, in CD funds as they deem appropriate um, with the expectation that at least a portion thereof uh, will need to be able to be made liquid for the building fund or something like that. Uh, or for any, yeah, or should we just say, I think let's just make it appropriate and then you can explain to them how you okay. have cash full of money that why don't we leave you a little more wiggle room there because maybe we start using the money for another project next year okay too as projects allowed by the federal government because the federal government has said what we can use the oh, sure. for. sure so if we tie it to that then that opens up to make sure that we have the ability to use them for, any for anything for that's allowable expenses Hey, let, let's say that's projects allowed by legislation, Amanda, because okay. a lot of that's going to be recovered as lost revenue. So that'll be guided by state legislation. So, okay. okay. Yeah. So you can get the fine wording on that, but that's my motion then. Do I have a second? Second. That's any other discussion about that from anyone? I just one more point I would maybe put in there, depending on kind of the term and, in, in, you know, 
duration of the investment. I know you specified kind of like a CD portfolio. There was a big jump in like treasury rates as well. So if you'd want to open that up, you know, that's a permissible investment in the investment policy too. You might want to just, you know, specify kind of, you know, fixed rate investments, you know, okay, then a specific CD, yeah. just say fixed so rate investments. Just yes. CDs, right. Maybe kind of the, you know, other okay. fixed rate investments too, as defined by the investment policy. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll amend that to have that language then. And we do allow treasuries throughout the investment policy. Okay. All right, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Pass. And then maybe, Chad, next week uh, we can meet with Vince and kind of go over everything and kind of come up with a game plan. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd like to get that money moved out of checking and into something. Yeah. Uh, if you want everything on the July's general government, that will, uh, Lisa is gone, but I can manage it or what's left of today because uh, agendas for that will be going on Wednesday. Okay. We can. Um, yeah, let me think about that, Shabana. I got to figure out if we'd have, if we'd be able to have a decision on what's going where by July 8th. So that might, yeah. that might be a little tight for us to figure out by July 8th. We could always meet and just kind of give them a high overview of say we're looking at doing this and we'll come back to you in the next general government meeting also. Yeah, just give us the talking points. That that would be a good idea. Yeah. Chad's good at that. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Roberts, anything else or I'm gonna get a motion to adjourn. Uh the next it says on here to discuss a possible next meeting date. Do we want to just say for this committee within the next six to twelve months or as needed? I would say three to six months. Great, I just lost. How often do we need to have these, Chad? Well, you got to have them at least once a year, but I think since we're actively looking at this money and we have this additional flush, maybe we should meet in six months to see how things are performing. Um, just because looking at PMA's estimates for what the interest rates are doing and all, it looks like it's like, like they're predicting that they're going to hold fairly steady till December, but I think December there may be some movement you know, things may change do you know off the top of your head the bank bid um is that general government is that investment committee i cannot remember the, life of me. the bank the bank bid would be full general government the rfp okay so we're going to go ahead and go with december 17th for our next meeting date if we need to change that we'll change it but that's six months from okay. now basically oh. okay same time same place then okay do we got a motion to adjourn amanda did you are you good with um the arpa funds did you want to go into any of that in more detail or is that going to be um, I, yeah i think chad has a really good handle on what's allowed and what's not mm -hmm. I, um, <laughs> we'll be discussing that in general government yeah so i think we will just um once we determine what we what the county wants to do as an investment we'll kind of reach out to you if whether some of the funds are going to go with you um, I would like to see, I know we have nine right now in the WISC. I would like to see about investing another three back into the CDs. So yep. if we could come with that in the next week. Um, yeah. Chad and I, yep. can, I can shoot it to Chad also. And so I think there's that WISC, is, that WISC is just performing so low. I mean, it doesn't make sense having all this money sitting in the WISC. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's performance is just horrible. Yeah. Um, that, and I, as far I, as the... <laughs> And as far as the ARPA goes, Josh, um, a lot of it's going to depend on how much we determine as recoverable through lost revenue, because that changes a lot of what you can do with the ARPA money. I was going to say, yeah, before investment discussion on that, I, I, I agree. I think identifying the uses you're going to have for that, right? Kind of identifying projects, how much is going to go towards lost revenue. I think that's going to open up, right? Like, what are we looking for for investments, right? Is this going to be, you know, majority kind of short term, you know, within nine months? Is it going to be you know, nine to, to 24 months, is it going to be even longer? So, yeah, I think when those kind of projects and kind of some of those numbers are known for, you know, allowable uses and how are you going to use those funds, that'll kind of define, I think, that next step of, okay, you know, what are our investment options for those funds? So, happy to connect on that once, you know, once you have some of those. But we don't, but what I understand today is we don't need to run this back. You guys, Chad and Amanda and Vince, you guys are going to work out when you move money, when you put it in, we've given the authority to do that, and we don't need to run that issue back before a board meeting, right? 
Okay. No, I don't think so. All right. Okay, so we had a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, guys. And Chad, I'll kind of shoot you an email about some of the stuff we talked about in regards to the investment, so you have kind of an overview. Okay. All right. I'm headed to the hospital in just a bit because they're about to let me in. So I'll try to answer email when I can. Yeah. Okay. Monday's fine. Thanks, Chad. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you, folks. Good luck.